Um, all right. Next. Oh, no, still want that. Okay. All right. Um, next, please um, join me in welcoming Shabazz Jamal um, up to the lectern. Um, Shabazz is an interdisciplinary artist based here in New Orleans. His work rooted in still portraiture, experimental video and performance interrogates physical, political and social economical space by using queerness, not as a means of speaking about sexuality, but as a catalyst to challenge varying power relations. Thank you so much, Shabazz, for being with us. I'm gonna try not to get the big head with this mic because um, I'm feeling real Beyonce-ish right now. Um, so if I start performing, just join in, but be mindful that you are not Beyonce. I am not just kidding. Um, thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, the Black Interior um, is a space for thought and action, for study and vandalism, for love and trouble. How we live and where we stay is not a social problem. It is our relation um, to, white, to the white world that is a problem. I wanna thank Sadia Hartman for those words and thank you all for being here tonight. Um, I am Shabazz J or Beyonce, and this is a glimpse into my thesis exhibition titled Somewhere Above the Earth and Beneath God I Found Home. Um, I want to start this lecture off by honoring my grandmothers, um, by having them to look back to. I have found ways of healing and surviving, and because of the spaces that they've curated, I know the importance of seeing oneself and the significance of comfort and rest. It is because of their spaces that I see the elegance and resistance, and I am able to understand the ways in which the documentation of our survival is resistance and therefore beautiful. Um, so my relationship with the image began in the homes curated by my grandmothers. My earliest memories of my maternal grandmother, Carolyn, are of her with her disposable Kodak camera. Before every event of varying significance, she was there, camera in hand, um, I have sometimes written here, but she was most times late for every event um, because she was going to Walgreens to get one of these cameras. Um, these photos will wind up in the innumerable albums that will be housed underneath tables, beneath the china cabinet, and scattered throughout the bedroom closets. It took me years to realize how her desire to capture these moments influenced my own desires of documentation. <clears throat> During family gatherings at her home, um, these albums would journey out of those closets and from deep within the china cabinet onto the kitchen table, where we would congregate around them. The room would immediately fill with conversation and laughter as we each took a book and began reminiscing on the people, places, and events captured within these time capsules. As hands stretched across the table to point and grab the books to get a closer look, I would listen earnestly as my grandmother, mother, aunts, and cousins connected stories to faces and collectively we would transport from place to place as we flip through these weathering books. <clears throat> like my maternal grandmother, the home of my father's mother, Mary Alice, was also a repository for images. Her home, almost museum-like in nature, was elegant and visually stimulating, with images and decorative objects filling almost every space in the quaint St. Louis home. Walking into her space meant entering in with a particular reserve, particularly reserved nature as everything within it was precious, and as my grandfather would say, he worked hard for this house, so therefore the objects within it were to be treated with a particular care. Having to take my time in this space, uh, having to take my time in this space meant get, gaining the ability to really sit with what was happening and how my grandmother made this space in her image. It was through my relationship with these images and spaces and my ability early on to reckon with their worthiness that I was able to grasp with the value of the black vernacular space. Because of their familiar nature, they generate a sense of safety through aesthetic choices that designate them as kin, which makes it clear to me that these places are worthy of study and veneration. The desire to recognize these places and images and their impact on my own making serves as a starting point for this body of work. So this is gonna involve technology and I've already um, like prepared a dance just in case this doesn't work, but 
That's in the fight now. Yeah. Hey God, we, we remember the days when we had to squash through the mud in order to get here. Didn't have a cover over our head. Yeah. You have blessed us right now, dear God, and all we got. Yeah. We thank you, dear God, for the love that you have given each of us that we can now share with each other. Yeah. Thank you for the bond of a family, dear God. Our family is something that we know to you is important. Yeah. As you looked upon Abraham's family and blessed it. Um, I like to think that my thinking around this idea of home and what it really means uh, began a few years before my time here at Tulane um, with this video piece, Sitting with the Burdens of Freedom. Within the video, there are three different iterations of myself. Um, each is representative of a generation of my family that called this parcel of land in Kenlock, Missouri. Throughout the video, my grandmother, I mean, my grandfather narrates his journey from the Mississippi Delta to St. Louis. And it's the first instance of uh, the intergenerational approaches to narration showing up in my work. I was understanding, um, it was this understanding that the happenings of my grandfather and his father before him weren't isolated occurrences and instead are tied to both my body and this land that we call home. I began to think about the ways that the land and body are violently connected through colonial labor practices while simultaneously relishing in the history of this particular parcel of land and the grounding that it offers me through my family's history. Examining the complicated relationship between my body and the geography of the American Midwest and South um, remain pivotal to my ways of thinking and making today. Um, um, it was also within this work that I began to use semiotics associated with the vernacular image, particularly through the use of TV static and VHS icons. These symbols act in rooting the work with individual language that is undeniably grounded in home, um, as I have come to understand it and fully integrated into my practice. Another work that lends itself to the current state of my practice is the performance and found object sculpture nowhere from here. Through this performance, I moved various objects found within the city of Kenlock, a once bustling black neighborhood, now acting as a waste site for neighboring municipalities to Granite City, Illinois. The purpose of this performance was to bridge together the two spaces through the shared invasion of these unwanted objects. Within this work, I was particularly interested in how I could image space without the camera. This way of imaging through the recontextualization of objects has been instrumental in getting to where I am now. <clears throat> so in an attempt to save the aged and weathered images, um, I took it upon myself to begin digitizing the slew of albums that my grandmother had in her possession. While scanning and creating a digital archive, I began paying attention to the physical changes that happens to an image when the book engulfs it. Increasingly, it became important for me to document the album in a way that preserved this tactile nature. Um, so Tina Camp explains in listening to images that engaging these images as decidedly haptic objects um, is a method that requires us to interrogate both the archival encounter as well as the content of archival collections in multiple tenses and multiple temporalities and in ways that attend to both their stakes and their possibilities. It is from here that the visual nuances of the album became much more apparent to me. Things such as the distracting shine of the plastic that bound the images to the page that sometimes prohibited you from parts of the image, as well as the yellowing of the pages and images from the stained um, an adhesive, um, acidic adhesive um, began to shift the way that I engaged with the album. Um, this, as well as my grandmother's seemingly random way of organizing the images on the page, became important to my process of understanding this object as not only archival in nature, but uh, as an artwork in itself. Driven by my new understanding of the book, I strove to evoke the physical and visual sensations I would had when engaging with it. Um, I began a series of digital collages where I again found myself concerned with Kenlock, this time through the centering of my vision, um, this time though, centering my vision on the way that the matriarch of my family had imaged the long forgotten space. At the time, I had been looking through institutional archives for information and images to supplement those of my grandmother, but surprisingly, there weren't many. What I was able to come across though was in no way comparable to the vast amount of information allotted to me through the familiar archives that I had access to. This realization that the institutional archives um, were at a deficit when it came to black stories made it clear that I would have to rebuke those institutions and center my practice on the vernacular in order to make work that is representative of my desires. 
Through this realization, um, citation became an integral aspect of my artistic practice. I found that this way of making was fueled by my interest in reimagining the past as a means of confronting the present and creating new futures. During this period, the camera itself became less uh, an essential tool for making as the photo scanner became much more central to my process. I was and still am fascinated by the new modalities that an object or an image takes, uh, takes on when contextualized in a different manner. This process aids me in my desire to queer the objects, images, and spaces used within my work. And through the recontextualization of these images, I am able to revere and uphold the, their significance while also being able to find the ways in which they are also lacking and incomplete. In Photographic Returns, Racial Justice in the Time of Photography, Sean Michelle Smith iterates that the, uh, that the photograph has an intrinsic temporal recursivity, or rather a backward and forward motion and in uh, movement inherent to the medium that invites returns. The album, in my opinion, is the physical embodiment of this theory. Um, it is the object that calls back to us and allows the viewer the ability to migrate through space and time in ways that other photographic displays don't allow. Understanding the role of the album and its relationship to time travel, I began to compose my own albums in an attempt to flatten the time between the past and the present. I began to think materially about these albums and how they can engage with space in a manner that relinquished them from the confines of the home. Through many experiments, I decided to reduce the album to the basic materials of image, plastic, and cardstock, when, uh, which allowed me the opportunity to reimagine them. Um, through these experiments, I began to create objects that resembled and performed like the album, but exposed the images to space in a way that rendered them visible. Through reference to the assumingly unorganized nature of my grandmother's albums, I began to think about how to utilize this as a way of, utilize this way of organizing as a formal element within the work. It was important to me that the images were in conversation with one another in a similar fashion to the images of my grandmother. Through this organizational pattern, uh, the images began to play in space and amongst each other in a similar recursive nature as proposed by Sean Michelle Smith. When displayed in this manner, the images seemed to freeze in motion and disrupt the linear nature that we engage with them. Continuing in within this work, um, self-portraiture remains an indispensable aspect of this body of work. Um, I became more aware of how imaging my body adds to this complex narrative started by my grandmother's. And I saw the practice of self-imaging as a method that ensures my own survival. To make myself visible within this context acts as a disruption to the status quo um, and brings to question the heteronormative nature of the album and makes the desires of a queer, fat, black body central to the object. <clears throat> through the use of the vernacular image in my body, I'm visually working through the complex relationship between black people and our understanding of cultural identity and belonging, as well as how we decide to image and create narratives for and of ourselves. Um, this remains increasingly important in redirecting conversations around our existence. So um, alongside the photographic work, I return back to video. Um, and I think I would be remiss to like ignore the, um, the way the moving image, especially that of the home video, has been influential in my practice and my relationship with the vernacular image. Like the Kodak camera and Polaroid images, as my family reached a certain class status, the moving image became a much more accessible way of documenting. Throughout the video installation titled Like Home, I engaged in a series of performances as a composite character inspired by the women in my family who have given me language around my own feminine desires. The performances are venerative in nature and act as an homage to the methods of survival often unimaged and lost to the fragmented nature of memory and imagery. Um, during a trip back home, I spent a considerable amount of time in the places I had found my inspiration and began to take note of the intricate ways in which the homes were adorned and kept. It was at this time that I began questioning what home meant for me and if the concept of home, of safety, of comfort was even an option for me. My body, or rather the flesh that held my spirit, was the only place I knew to call home. This complication of the notion of home inspired the way I envisioned this work progressing and made way for me to begin in a new trajectory. World making, as we know, it starts from worlds already on hand. The making is a remaking. Um, this is how Nelson Goodman explains world making as a practice that is citation based in nature. 
Goodman's understanding of world making was built off Ernst Cassier's theory of the multiplicity of words, which simply put is the understanding that within our one world, many other worlds exist and without the whole of the sum, none of them would exist as we know it. This understanding of our world as a conglomerate of many worlds, each as real and as possible as the next, provided me with the language to understand the work that I had been making. It was from this understanding that I realized that my infatuation with citation was charged by my desire to create worlds that made space for my desires, and that inherently my desires are extensions of that of my grandmother's. It then made complete sense to, uh, to build a world where the aesthetics and semiotics I associated with their spaces found, way into, found their way into my work. With this understanding of my work, I began taking cues um, from, their, from their ways of homemaking and began to relate this practice to my own desires of visibility and self-care as it pertained to my body. This led me to begin thinking outside of the frame and more deliberately about the installation of my work and how the complete adorning of this space would be the final product. One of the results of this realization uh, is Le Fleur, um, and excuse my French, uh, Dion especially, um, a digital collage turned wallpaper I created to act as backdrop for the other works to exist. This wallpaper ambiguously reads together a vast number of white magnolias alongside my body, repeating on a white plane. The arrangement of these objects um, somewhat obscures them, which acts as a reference to the way that the black body, both within and outside of the archive, is sim simultaneously hypervisible and invisible. Alongside these ex explorations of my body and space making, I began utilizing vernacular objects as a method of grounding this work within the framework of homemaking. The recontextualization of these emotionally charged objects alongside my body act in strengthening the visual relationship between the body and home. The objects utilized were chosen due to their ability, ability to attend to my desires of citation, while also acting and communicating to those that encounter them that this is home. <clears throat> For those moments when home is too far away is a successful example of object and image coming together in a manner that reimagines space through the recontextualization of object and figure. Inspired by the way that my body operated in Le Fleur and for those moments when home was too far away, I continued experimenting with the relationship between the body and the image and the object. I began to approach other places of photographic exhibition within the home and landed on the fridge. This particular household appliance has always held a very complicated and contentious place within my household and a particular, particularly difficult object for me personally as I dealt with my own body image. My desire then became to confront this object head on through reclamation and re-imaging uh, by using this object as a place of confrontation. The reimagining took place um, through the creation of magnets, 3D printed, made from a series of self-portraits. By placing my body on this object and making this, uh, by placing my body on this object, this like the wallpaper allows my body to be present within the space without being obvious and again ties together the intrinsic relationship between the home and the body. <laughs> Through my returns and acts of confrontation and reflection, I am able to create a space that makes clear the importance of the Black vernacular archive while simultaneously making space for contemporary existences. This dialogue between generations is a, a central to my survival. Um, I wanna thank you all for listening to me here tonight. And again, I am Shabazz, and this was Somewhere Above the Earth and Beneath God, I Found Home. And just a heads up, uh, all the questions were asked for Christian, so we can wrap up tonight. No, just kidding. Um, yeah. Uh, yes. Um, thank you for that, um, and thank you for seeing that. Um, so uh, the magnolia is also the state flower of Missouri too, um, where I, my mother's side of the family is from, um, and my dad is from Yazoo, Mississippi. Um, and so when I talk about semiotics, um, the magnolia to me is a symbol of home because it, it points me back to those two particular places that my family has um, a history. Um, yeah, so I hope that was, yeah, I think that was a simple enough answer. <laughs> Yeah. 
um, the material is more so um, meant to like draw a line between these. I'm sorry. Oh yeah. Um, so the question was about uh, the material in the uh, video piece, um, the blue tool that's being, uh, I guess, taken across the page. Um, at first I was just using it as a compositional element, but as I was working through it, um, it really became like a way to tie together these three figures visually. Um, and I mean, I guess it also could be the river. Um, maybe I'll take that and say that the next time I give the lecture. So that sounds a lot more fun, um, but yeah. Um, it was really important for me to like, I guess visually like and literally ground myself on that on that land. Um, and so it, it's really um, a performance of me kind of praising or giving homage to the space. Um, and yeah, I feel a spiritual connection when I go back there because so much of my family's history is there. So it was really a way for me to, um, I guess, show that visually, um, that relationship, that spiritual relationship with the land. Yeah. For sure. Um, and the question asked was um, how, um, shoot, um, re religion and spirituality in relation to the work. And um, I have been reading uh, E. Patrick Johnson's uh, Sweet Tea. And he talks about like this performance of Southerners and how um, in this performance, um, it's indicative that like the way that we perceive the South, like as, as a genteel uh, place, um, but also like just the relationship between black folks, queer folks and God, um, and like the church being a space for a lot of black queer folks to really come to terms with them. Like it's a complicated space because it is um, demonizing their existences, but also it operates as a space for like them to exist in a particular way and have power. Um, and so that, has lent itself to the way that I'm, I'm titling the work and thinking about religion, but also was just intrinsic. Um, my grandmother, both of them are church going every Sunday. Um, my grandmother calls me still to this day and I've been here for two years and asked me if I found a church home. Um, and I have not, uh, I barely have a home, uh, which is what we're talking about here. But um, so it's, it's, it's more so, I guess me leaning into just the way that um, the integral way that like the church and this this way of speaking and 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 the spirit kind of shows up in my life, um, and as much as that's not a part of like my practices today, I, I I find that like returning back to them is also still very healing, and and I still want to honor and revere that part of that that experience that I've had um, with the church, yeah, yeah. Um, I think this is like a good time to bring these images back because um, when I started working through the scanning process, um, that conversation of like how much do I give, how much do I show of these things that are very personal and intimate came up a lot like in my own uh, dealings with this work and like, you know, is this work just for me? Do I make this a public work? Um, and so 
these experiments with the, the scanner um, were ways for me to really get at the aesthetics uh, of the image itself, but also find ways of taking certain things out, um, adding certain things. Um, and so I really began to like think about like how the image could be obscured and still like remain true um, as, a, as a means of like keeping these relics private and upholding like the, the secret, not the secrecy, but like the intimacy of these objects. Um, I think it also, um, in moments like this, I started to think about like how the, the album itself kind of prohibits you from seeing certain parts of the image. Um, and so using those, um, those cues, those visual cues within the work that I was making to kind of block the viewer from certain parts of the image became important too. Um, and then I go in and talk about like how I'm also using objects as a way of like imaging the space as a way of um, not actually taking photographs, but like alluding to or like being assigned to others that this is home um, without actually having to make images or photographs of the house. Um, and so like those have become like the, the things that I've incorporated in my practice to um, keep these images sacred um, in that way. All the way in the back there. I think um, I'm gonna try to repeat it for the, the people on Zoom and myself. Um, but I think what you were saying is um, how am I approaching, I guess, the, arch the, the installation as an archive? Is that? Or? Okay. Yeah. Um, I think, so by approaching it through like an inst installation-based uh, body of work, um, I'm redirecting or reframing what an archive actually is. Um, um, it's not just the book itself, um, it's, it's the book in this space, in this space, like in all the aspects of this space constitute as the archive. So the wallpaper that adorns my, my grandmother's wall, um, the curtains that she has had since the 70s, um, the photographs that she's had um, or like the obituaries or like the church fans, like all of those things are the archive. Um, and by, I guess, creating a space that I'm, I'm claiming is archival, I'm rebuking again, those institutional ways of thinking about archive um, and those sterile ways of the archive and really um, centering it in on like the way that I've uh, been able to approach the archive throughout my life. Yeah, Sean.
um, I think it's queer for black folks, especially black queer folks to accept religion in this way um, because we, like because of how the church and uh, specifically treats like black queer bodies um, and for us to continuously go back to those spaces, I think that's, that's queer in itself. I think blackness in, in its entirety is queer, but I think that the relationship um, between the black queer body and the church is particularly queer um, because it is very fraught. It is, it is very contentious, but it also is a place of love and warmth and, and safety at times. Um, and so I think that my critique of the institution of, of the archive, be it the family archive or um, archives as a whole, really comes from the way that I'm placing my body in here and the way that my body is operating within the work. Um, yeah. Does that, does that, you know, is, is, okay, okay. I think it could, I think it could, I think both things can happen simultaneously. I think one can like critique an institution and also accept it. Um, and I think that's what's happening here. Um, like I'm I don't I guess I I'm like I my grandmother's albums were very heteronormative. Like I only saw um, cis male and cis female relationships within these spaces. And I've always I think the the work around the video work also inspired was inspired by my desire to see myself in this album in this particular type of way. Um, and to see myself as I wanted to be presented and not like my grandmother presented me within these albums. Um, and so, yeah, that's how I guess I'm, I'm like querying this album and like, but also like being very grateful that it exists because without it, I wouldn't see myself at all. Um, yeah. One more question, I want my minute. Okay. Uh, thank you. <laughs> All right, on your way out, let me just remind you that um, these exhibitions will be on view in the Carroll Gallery, um, opening on April 28th with a reception on May 5th. And then please come back and join us um, this Thursday night um, for round two. And then uh, May 3rd, Blaine, um, our glass um, grad will also be lecturing. Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate you being here. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Shabazz, so much.